What's going on, everybody? Um, so it's been a while since we've sat down at this desk, hasn't it? I think probably too long. But, you know, to be honest with you, the weather's been getting nicer, and I've been having way too much fun going outside and actually flying. Um, but I think today's the day where we buckle down and we get a little bit of work done. What do you say we do some beta flight? Maybe we'll install some drivers. How's that sound? Let's do it. Okay, let's get some drivers installed so we can get our flight controllers connected to the computer and successfully connected to Betaflight. The first step is we're gonna have to open Betaflight. Doesn't matter how you do it, if you have an icon on your desktop or whatever, just click on that guy and get it open. Once Betaflight is open, by default, you should be on the welcome screen right here and we don't want to plug anything in at this point. This is all we want, just the general welcome where we have a little bit of info about beta flight. But we also have some links here for some things that can be quite helpful. We can get the source code for the firmware. We can get binary images, but we can also download our drivers. Today, we're only going to be concerned with two of the drivers in this list here. We're going to install the CP210X driver and also the STM USB VCP driver. We're not going to worry about ZDIAG today. Uh, ZDIAG is more for replacing drivers. Uh, it can be used for installation, but honestly, it's a relatively advanced tool, and I have a much easier way to correct issues that you would normally use ZDIAG for, and that's going to be in my next video. So for right now, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into downloading the first two. To get my CP210X driver, all I'm going to do is just click on this link right here and Betaflight is going to take me to the correct web page. Now that that page is loaded, this is what you're going to see. We're at a company called Silicon Labs and we're going to start scrolling down to find the driver that we're looking for. Because I'm on Windows 10, this is the version that I'm going to download, but as you can see, there are several other versions of this driver for different versions of Windows. So please download whatever is appropriate for your Windows installation. If you're not on Windows 10, more than likely you're gonna be using this one here, which is designed for Windows 7, 8, and actually also 10. I usually go for the one with the serial emulation. I don't know why, it's just what I've always installed and I haven't had any issues with it. So if you're gonna download this version for Windows 7 or 8, maybe go with the serial emulation, I don't know. I don't think it matters either way, but I've always selected this one. Anyway, this is the one I need here for Windows 10. I'm going to go ahead and click on the link and start that download. I'm going to select Save File in case I need these drivers again for another computer or if I need to reinstall things. So let's say OK and we'll let this get started. While this one downloads, I'm going to go back to Betaflight and I'm going to click on the link for my STM USB VCP driver. Now that this page is loaded, this is the website that you're going to get. We have a few links here on the top, quick view, resources, and also get software. You're gonna have to click on this link, get software, and it's gonna bring us to the bottom of the page where now this get software button is enabled. If you just scroll down, this option isn't gonna be here unless you click on the get software. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on this and wait for the next web page to load. Of course, nowadays we always have to accept and agree. And here's the catch with this one particular driver. You do have to provide an email address to be able to download it because they are going to email you the link for the actual download. You can't get it directly from the website. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my info here. Okay. Make sure you use a valid email because you are going to need this to download the software. Make sure you accept again and probably avoid this one unless you like spam email. So they're just like, hey, let's sign you up for crap because everybody loves that. Anyway, let's go to download. And as you can see, your registration has been successfully submitted. To validate your email and start to download, please check the link inside the email that has been sent to you. Just like I said earlier. So we're done here. 
I'm going to go ahead and log into my Gmail and we're going to take a look at what we have there. I've opened the email for my VCP driver and this is what I'm presented with. Here's the link for the download. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and this should initiate the download directly. After waiting for the web page to load, this is what I'm presented with and I'm going to want to go ahead and save this file. While I wait for the second driver to complete downloading, I kind of have a mini announcement to make. Uh, I have ways for you guys to get in contact with me. If you need help, technical support, maybe if you live in the area and you want to get together and fly, I'm always down and I'm always down for meeting new members of our community. So if you guys would like to get in touch with me, you can send me an email to drone at gmail.com and I also have the Derek and his drone hotline. So if you'd like to give me a call or a text message or even a voicemail, heck, who knows? If you leave me a good voicemail, you may even make it into an episode. Uh, but give me a ring. I'd love to hear from you. And the telephone number is 413-707-2666. Give me a call. But I think our drivers are done. Let's do some installing. You're going to want to go ahead and open File Explorer and if you haven't changed any of your settings chances are by default everything we just downloaded is going to go into your download folder which is a makes sense right easy place to find it so go ahead and navigate over to here and here we have our two new downloads that we're gonna go ahead and install it doesn't matter which order you do it in either or pick one and go for it uh, the installation on both of them is gonna be relatively similar but let's just get into it I am going to extract all the files by right clicking and then saying extract all. I'm going to open the extraction wizard and I'm pretty much just going to leave all the defaults and just say extract. After that, Windows should go ahead and open the folder for you with the software we're going to be installing. Just go ahead and double click on the folder and somewhere in here we should have a couple of installers we'll see we have an x86 and an x64 if you have an older computer this is probably what you're going to be using if you have a newer computer it's probably a 64-bit and more than likely you're going to go ahead and use this one this is important to know uh, there are ways to figure this out in your computer uh, but not something i'm going to get into in this video because we're doing fpv we're not doing computer maintenance right so if you're stuck on it, whatever, hit me up, but for the most part, you're probably going to be doing the x64 version. Uh, whenever doing driver installs, it's probably a good idea to run it as an administrator. So I'm going to do a right click on this. I'm going to say run as administrator, and this should begin the installation. Okay, so the computer is now warning me that something is trying to make a change. Well, since I want to connect my flight controller, we should probably continue with this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on yes. Now our installation wizard is open. On the first window, we're just going to click next. We're going to let the installation begin. And this could take a couple of minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. Once it's done, you should have a message indicating that it was successful. And just simply click on finish. Close the folder with the first driver and now I'm gonna navigate my way over to the second one. Same thing, right click, extract all, leave your defaults and say extract. The extraction is complete and now I'm presented with the folder containing the software that we're now going to install. Again, I have a few different installer versions here. We have x64, 64-bit or x86, 32-bit. Again, you need to know what kind of operating system you're running. Uh, and for my particular installation, I'm going to go with this one here, the W8 X64 64-bit installer. Same deal, right click, run as administrator, and wait for the installation wizard to begin. Make sure you click yes to make changes. All right, our wizard has loaded and we're ready to continue. On the first screen, I'm just simply going to click next. I don't need to change anything here, uh, except they do want you to put in some kind of a company name. About, we just make up some gibberish. Blah, 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 blah. Perfect. 
So this is my new company name, .com. You can find me there. Next. Uh, again, we don't need to change anything. Just click Next. And we're going to allow the installation to take place. While I've been sitting here for a while now, and I think I'm going to work my way through the device driver installation wizard, uh, if you see this, I'm not sure why this came up this time, uh, but Windows wants to install a new driver for something. Uh, it's obviously based off the software we're installing, so there's no harm in that. Um, but I, I think I need to get through this before we can move forward. Uh, so I'm just going to click Next. Let the computer do its deal. Try to do whatever. Essentially now it's asking us, are we sure that we want to install this driver? And I'm pretty sure. Make sure you leave this checkbox ticked so you always trust software uh, from the ST Microelectronics. Uh, this way it'll make any installations in the future much easier. Uh, well, let's click install. Uh, so this is finished. And let's see if, look at that, as soon as I went through that wizard, it, it finished up our initial installation. Um, so we're done. Uh, it's asking us for updates. I don't think we need to do any type of updating because we just downloaded them and they're brand new. These drivers literally came out in February. I'm just going to click on no and I'm going to finish. Uh, now I think I can start wrapping things up. I'm going to close everything up. And before connecting my flight controller, it's always a good idea to reboot your computer whenever you've installed drivers. Even if it didn't ask you to reboot, you should always reboot. So just simply click on your start menu, hit the power icon, you'll get presented with this menu, and simply hit the old restart and allow the computer to reboot. Well, now we got some drivers installed, so we're starting to move along. In the next video, we're going to work on DFU mode and preparing our flight controller to be able to install Betaflight. And then from there, we're going to move forward with the configurator and actually setting things up and what the individual items are. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, maybe I earned your subscribe or maybe even you'll click that like button for me. If you do, I will super appreciate it forever and ever and ever. If you've got some spare time and maybe a little bit of money to spend, check out hotdogfpv.com. They are the maker of the finest goggle straps on the planet, hands down. They also have a really awesome line of apparel, some really cool, really cool shirts that you can help express your personality with. But that's all I got. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.